these are actually boxes of bikes showing up. So uh, both from Giant and Marin, we're starting to see some, uh, a smattering of bikes rolling into the store. One of the highlights though, is this guy here. We just got this, I think yesterday. This is the Marin Alpine Trail 7. So this is, basically this is a refurbish of a model that uh, had been out for the last two years, pretty much unchanged. And the old model was a shop favorite with a couple of our mechanics and even one of our former staff members um, riding one of them and all absolutely loving how playful, how capable, um, how good of a bike overall that previous model was. And everything about this new model makes us think that it's going to be um, even more of the same. So this is the Alpine Trail 7. It's a 3449 bike in Canada. It's the base of a couple different um, versions. There's the Alpine Trail 7, and then there's also an Alpine Trail XR, which is a coil sprung um, sort of upgraded model, which is um, just under 5,000 bucks Canadian. So we're just gonna show you uh, the specifications on this, some of the details, talk about the angles and who this bike is for. So we'll get right into it. This has a Dior 1x12 uh, drivetrain on here. So of course we're gonna get that magical Dior 10 to 51 gear range. So we have about as broad a gear range as you can ask for on this. Tires are a V tire flow snap with this new top 40 compound. It's a 29 by 2.6, tubeless ready. The rims on this guy are pre-taped. So if you wanted to set this guy up tubeless, it's basically just pull off the tires, pull out the tubes, Put some sealant and some valves in there and you should be ready to go without too much trouble. Uh, this top 40 compound seems to feel a little bit um, kind of like an Askai type of uh, compound. It's a really grippy compound. And then it is on Marin's rims that they use on piles of their bikes, which are a tubeless compatible 29 millimeter internal rim. And because we're using the uh, Shimano Dior cassette on here, that means that the rear hub is actually a Shimano hub as well. As with some of the other new full suspension bikes this year, this is using the new Marin chainstay protector, which wraps around a little bit underneath there. Uh, there is an ISCG tab on the frame down there, an FSA Comet crank set with a steel narrow wide chain ring. As is the case with basically all of the Marin full suspensions these days, this is a linkage driven single pivot bike. So single pivot being that guy right there. And if you've been paying attention to a lot of stuff going on lately, I would say that their pivot placement is very similar to that of a commensal, which is also a single pivot link linkage driven system. And uh, there's a lot of proven results aboard that bike that shows that single pivot can work incredibly well. One of the big things that single pivot allows for on this bike is that it has a really short chain stay of 430 millimeters, which for a bike that has 150 millimeters or six inches of travel in the back, um, that is a really short chain stay, especially for not having to use something like a super boost plus um, rear hub spacing like some of the other companies, Da Vinci and uh, and Pivot, namely, who also gets some short chain stays but have to use that special hub spacing. So this is a one, 150 rear end, 160 uh, millimeter travel front end. Seat tube angle on this, 76 degrees, 78 degrees, sorry, 76 was the last year's model. This is 78 degree seat tube angle. So this is getting into the steep end of the modern steep seat tube angle kind of trend. Head tube angle on this is what was once a head tube angle you would only see on a downhill bike. This is 63 and a half degrees, um, but it seems like the trends are pointing towards that will look very normal by next year. This year it looks kind of extremely slack, but uh, as we know from the previous version of this bike that was a 65 degree head tube angle, these things handle super well and a little bit of uh, extra slackness on there eh, might not have been a bad thing. So 
I'll carry on with the spec here in a bit, but because I was talking about measurements, reach on this guy, this is a size large, so it's a 480 millimeter reach, which is becoming probably the most common number you're heard uh, thrown around on modern kind of trail enduro bikes for a size large. Um, so it is kind of on trend as far as that goes. I would say the 78 degree seat tube angle is probably in the neighborhood of uh, a degree to two degrees steeper than many, but about the same as some of the outliers in the category. That steepness is gonna basically help to make up for the fact that you've got that really slack head tube angle in that your weight is gonna be centered on the bike on climbs. And so you won't be paying a penalty with that slack head tube angle of a front end wandering around because there's no weight on it. So it is kind of a one, two punch, seat tube angle, head tube angle. Um, you gotta make the one really steep if you wanna make the other one really slack. Um, on the rear shock here, the Rock Shocks Deluxe Select Plus rear shock. Basically that means we're dealing with um, the basics to make for a fully functional rear shock being it's an air shock with rebound adjustment being that red knob and then you have that blue knob that you can quickly flip if you want to lock this thing out. Um, knowing that this guy is, it doesn't appear to have changed really pivot placement. Um, I would assume this will pedal every bit as well as the last version and that version was a shockingly good climber for being such a capable bike. Um, we've got a really cool green color on here with some cool decal uh, detail, a nice guard um, down around the lump that sticks out on here. You'd maybe want to put some frame protection if you're going to shuttle um, below the higher portion of the down tube for uh, shuttle protection, but at least you've got some rock protection there. You do have room for a water bottle and then a couple natural spots either up here or maybe down there is a spot that you would just be able to squeeze in a, a tube strapped onto your bike. The fork on this guy, a 160 millimeter Rock Shocks Yari. Um, and that is with the new 2021 Debonair air spring in there. And what that air spring is going to do is to help support the weight, um, your weight a little bit higher in the travel than the old air springs that they're using. This is a fairly simple uh, damper in here. So you do just have a single uh, compression adjustment and like all these guys, got a red knob there for uh, rebound adjustment. Um, show you some of the details. Trans X dropper post. Um, this guy here, I think even on this size large, it was a um, 150 mil dropper. This is the one thing, like I'm six foot one, I have a large in this on order and I'm sure I'm gonna be running a 210 dropper because it's a really short uh, seat tube on these guys. They're definitely allowing you to run the longest possible dropper um, that anybody would want to run. The uh, dropper lever that goes along with that, nice one by sort of style. 40 mil stem on here, it's a Marin cockpit, so they're classic 780 mil bars that have nice uh, rise and sweep to them on a nice short stem. The Marin saddle, for my likings, it's a little bit flat. I prefer uh, saddles like the WTB Volt, um, but it's uh, at least a usable saddle. We've got a number of people that have uh, stock Marin saddles on their bikes and they've used them for a year and they don't have big complaints, so that could be me. This is the Shimano 420 M420 um, four piston brake that they have on here, front and rear. And this is going with 180 millimeter uh, rotor on the rear, a 203 rotor on the front. Bottom bracket is a threaded external bottom bracket. So for all those people that have hatred for press fit, there's nothing to worry about here. This shows the uh, Internal cable routing is a pretty sleek design going straight out of the down tube into the chain stay to pop out just a moment later 
um, to line up for that rear brake. And that's how things look where it goes into the frame. The new square head badge. Some people seem to be really excited either positively or negatively about head badges. That's honestly a thing I've never even thought about as a thing to like or not like about a bike, but whatever. There's that front brake with a 203 rotor. Once again, that same V flow snap tire on the front here. Head badge. And it does use the same compound on the front as well, that top 40 compound, tubeless ready, taped, all that stuff ready to go. So who is this bike for? Um, it's not the lightest bike in the world, so this isn't going to go uh, winning any cross-country races, but this is a bike for somebody who wants to ride really aggressively. Their riding focuses towards descending, but they still um, they still want to actually get themselves to the top of trails, not just shuttle or just um, do lift runs. Um, it'll pedal super, super well, judging by the last one, which blew me away when I test rode it. And then with our the number of our staff members who have ridden it and all of the comments being um, really quite surprised at just how good of a climber. This is a bike for somebody who wants to ride aggressively ride steeps or ride fast. They're getting a little bit more involved in gravity oriented riding. I'm just focusing on the rear end here just because this is one of the interesting things that allows for that short rear end is that there's nothing connecting the seat stays on this guy behind the seat tube. And a small detail compared to last year's version is this rocker on top here. It used to be two parts welded together in the middle and it's now an even cleaner uh, one-piece system. Another little detail compared to some bikes is below the shock here, we don't have a trap for garbage to sort of collect in. So anything that sort of comes onto the bike down here is gonna be able to just fall right out. It's not gonna get trapped. Um, so that's always nice. Show the details of the way the Rear pivots work on here. The hardware all looks like it's got really nice quality to it. We've got torque settings on these nice alloy um, fasteners that they're using, uh, with that one being an, an exception um, because it's sort of limited in size. So they just use a stainless steel bolt there. But Nice looking details on here for a bike that really pushes into um, a combination of capability and price point that you just don't see too often. Like there's just not too many sub four grand fully shreddable bikes out there. And of course the phone is ringing because I'm doing this. This is our lives these days in a bike shop that even in November continues to be busy. Um, so my criticisms of this bike, I think the dropper is a bit too short, but it's fully functional and um, there will be some people with short legs and long torsos who may appreciate that that's not a longer dropper, but I will on my personal one, I'll be upgrading all the way to a 210. So, I mean, maybe that's just a good thing is it gives me a good excuse to, uh, to upgrade. I'm just going to show you this kind of cool detail on the top tube here with that hut that is symbolic of a hut that's maybe up on Mount Tam or something like that. So in the criticisms, the dropper post, these M420 brake levers, I mean, I criticize them, but I realize that these are the first price point of a four piston brake. Um, and it comes with these really long levers. By the time we're at the five series four piston brakes, we do get the more Dior style um, single finger lever. But realistically, as you can see, we just run that lever further inboard here. Um, we run the dropper in that no man's land between the clamp and that little sort of support piece. Um, and everything spaces out that you can still get single finger uh, braking on these guys. And it really is, I mean, a, a pretty good set of brakes compared to uh, what we're used to seeing in years past on a price point-ish bike. So we're listening to the phone. We're looking at a bike that is ready for somebody who 
wants a capable descending bike, but is also going to work, willing to work on the climbs and probably enjoys climbs to some extent. Um, this isn't an agile trail bike. This is a descending focus trail into enduro bike kind of a category. Um, the nice thing with this being a 150 rear, 160 front travel bike is even with those angles, like some of the bikes that get really big in travel, you st just start getting into something that gets a little bit more cumbersome. Um, this you're still going to be able to play on the bike. And so this whole bike points at something that is um, made for fun, like that 430 chainstay on there, unlike the big enduro race bikes that are getting like 10 to 20 millimeters longer than that, that means you're going to be able to wheelie, manual, um, hop this thing that little bit easier. Um, the one comment I got from Keith, who's our head mechanic, he rides one of these, is he found his previous year's version to be the easiest bike that he's ever had for manualing in. And he is one of those uh, people that you swear at because he can manual for a mile on his bikes. So it's cool to hear from somebody who has skills that they actually notice um, when a bike makes it even easier um, when they're really skilled. There's all your details. We, so we're a shop in Canada and we already have pre-ordered um, a pile of these and the XRs. We haven't seen the XRs in person yet. We've just seen uh, team riders like Martha Gill um, riding hers and te teasing us with what looks like a beautiful and capable bike. Um, this guy here, I mean, the only direct comparison I can think of with this, um, largely because we're giant dealers as well, is this compares quite similarly to the giant rain uh, two alloy bike. Um, the rain in some respects um, kind of has a better drivetrain, but it's also a bike, like the two bikes, quite similar, but also quite different. So I think people are going to be picking one or the other uh, based on where they're riding, how they're riding, um, kind of their attitude with the bike, um, as opposed to trying to pick between two bikes that are sort of the same and you're nitpicking between specs. I think this is a great spec for the price. Um, you could use this as a trail bike if you wanted a bike that was capable, but you only get to do the gnarly stuff. Um, every couple weeks, you're not going to suffer too badly. Um, unless you're like a hundred pound rider, you will notice the fact that this is a bit of a heavier bike. Um, but that's one thing that we've come to expect Marin the last few years is focusing on building durability into their bikes, not on being lightest in category. They're trying to be the funnest bikes out there, not the lightest bikes out there. So all that stuff kind of goes hand in hand. So this is the Marin Alpine Trail 7, an alloy trail slash enduro slash awesome full suspension mountain bike. And thanks so much for watching and Hopefully we've helped, helped you to make some decisions or at least put this on your radar. If it hasn't been on your radar yet, this is such a standout. Man, we're excited about this bike. Can you tell? Ciao.